The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this Friday, the 17th of November. Now we're into the second half of the month. And what are we looking at? We're looking at a huge move in the Dow from the 32,327 uh, 32, low of the 27th of uh, October to the high of three days ago, 35,000, uh, that's not 51, was it? Yes, 30, 35,051. Just a sideways move. All that's needed is to go to 35,052 to start leg C. Now, what's really important about this <clears throat> is that the speed and the power of this, almost like a single leg A to the upside, is suggesting that we're going to have to do quite a lot of analysis over the next, uh, I, I would say, into Tuesday, based on the action over over this, uh, I, I would say, all of today and all of Monday going into early morning Tuesday. Why? Because when there is such a strong move, and look at that little constant, like a propeller shaft, it's almost got a one-to-one -to, -one to the upside. You probably have to go to 35,280, 35,330 level to get that one-to-one -to, -one to the upside with using this as a fulcrum, um, the propeller shaft midpoint. Uh, if there is a very sharp pullback in the next few days without going to 35,052, now this applies to the s and I'll, I'll, I'll do them parallel. So this is the daily chart on the left, daily chart of the S&P and the daily chart of the Dow. You can see Doji candle stalling formation. Usually that is either a halfway indicator like there, halfway indicator like there, or a reversal point. Uh, in this particular instance, it's a stalling point. Well, that could turn into a propeller shaft for another move up to maybe the gap, uh, somewhere in the gap to the upside. But look at the weekly chart, and that's really important. There's a Chapman wave methodology that I use called the falling axe formation. If I can just get to it over here. I think it's there it is, meaning that it goes to a high, usually a D, E or F has happened to go to G, and then it starts to make lower highs and much lower lows. Then all of a sudden, it finds some support and makes this V shape or cup shape formation, takes out that downtrend line, the expanding cone formation, declining expanding cone formation, and it can go one to one to the upside. Well, if that's the case, 4103 to the breakout level of let's call it 4400. You've got another 100 points to the upside. So um, let's just go one step at a time because what's happening now is that this weekly chart has, and look, the MACD is stochastic. Nothing here is very positive except today's Friday. And there's a chance that today at 4 o'clock, that L means that you finally cross positive, back to positive in the nine period moving average over the 14. And that says, aha, go to the next high, which was the high of the week of the 1st of September at 45, uh, 541.25, and then you can go to the next side. So you go step by step. So, so far, this is very productive. I just think that we're a little overboard. We need to see some kind of a pullback. You see exactly the same thing here in the QQQ. A very strong peak A, then a little minor pullback goes to B, <clears throat> and now it's taking this little digestive moment. And this digestive moment says, hey, look at the weekly chart. Don't get excited about this. Uh, you want to be able to put it into perspective, and it says 342 to 387. I mean, a 43-point move is it's amazing. Was it 12, 13 percent? Well, look at the weekly chart. Now, the whole thing is this: I call this a gray leg A, and that gray leg A stays in place because the starting point of this buy mode was way back here um, at about uh, 256. Now, that means that this basically could go to an E or a brand new A. So what I would do is if we went to 387.76 in the weekly chart, right now I'm calling it a gray A, meaning, yes, it looks great, but it hasn't broken above the previous high, so it's still in a new phase. That phase changes at one, one point above the, that previous high. Um, let me give it to you. I think it's 98. So let's just check. It's 
Thank you. Um, three, if I can just get into an area that I can read it. 387.98, yes. So that's 387.98, we've missed it by, what, 30, 14 cents, right? Uh, 24 cents. 24 cents to go to a new high. The moment it goes there, and it will, it becomes E slash, if it's this leg, it's the E slash A. E says, oops, be a little careful, you're getting a little toppy. A says, are you kidding? Every single <laughs> decline must be bought because it still will have to go to B, C, and D. I go one step at a time. Let's see what happens there. If the MACD has crossed positive, that says, you know what, this is really positive. So we go one step at a time. IWM, I'll just do this quickly because I want to get to the currencies. I've been talking about that for three days. <clears throat> Very strong move up from an ugly day yesterday. One, 196 uh, up at 177.75 in the IWM. And it's getting closer to retesting the 180.18 200 period exponential moving average, which says then now I can go to a new leg C. And that'll be a very positive aspect. Why? <clears throat> because in the in the weekly chart, it'll start to tag and then try to break above the 200 period moving average that's been a fulcrum for the up and down move all the time. And wow, this arch formation in the monthly chart is horrible. So to change that, at least you want to get another H to M pattern trying to get to the 196 area. That's a big ask. We'll see if it can do that. All right, now I'm going to go to, to this. Just finish it off. Gold is um, down now four points. The silver contract, which had really had a way better move than gold, is I, here again. I, could, I should call this an alternate count A slash E. Just for the moment, we're calling it E. I want to see what happens with silver. Uh, 2351 is the 200-period moving average that's been its nemesis for just months. Um, it, it's above the previous high, but the MACD is good. Stochastics under 80 percent is 75. On balance forms a little overbought. Nine period moving average is above the 14. All of this is positive, but just let's see what happens by about Tuesday of next week. If silver can get to 24.53 or higher, that's fantastic action. If it starts to pull back and goes under 23.40, says, hey, I just need a bit of a breather here. Okay, I need it now to go to the dollar. DXY. <clears throat> This 200 period moving average, I mean, what a magnificent tool this is. Just put it on your platform and you'll see. You don't need it until you need it. When you need it, look at the magnet of the 200 period moving average. It went for almost a month, just stuck there uh, back in August uh, before the September breakout to the upside. Now it's back there. <clears throat> and it's had four sessions of hitting the 200 period moving average. Hasn't broken down. The, the stochastics are 12%. The MACD is quite negative. So I I must tell you, we are, we're still long. We've been long since 2018. <clears throat> and we have little bits that we've taken off. We haven't added anything yet. We've taken, you know, something off just part of money management. I'm watching this closely because in the big picture, the, the dollar is the currency that countries want to go to still. It is really important. So I can understand that it pulls back and has all these uh, gyrations within a trading range. I just don't think that that's it for the dollar. I do think it's going to pull back. So we're going to go through the other currencies as soon as I return. Dow's down 24, so he's down 5. A consolidation day. I'll be all right. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. We're looking at the dollar, and this is the uh, daily chart of the U.S. dollar. And I'm doing a chart wave analysis. I was going to do this before, and I thought, you know what? I'm just going to wait. Uh, actually until I'm, I do this live. Let me just, I need to put the correct, it's right there, okay. So what I like to do is if I, if I look, look if, if it's already gone this far, there's no use me putting the midpoint right there at that doji candle peak E at 107.35 on the 3rd of October. What I then do is I look for a cup formation, and I go to the trough, and that trough is right there. And then what I do is I do a measured move from that to the bump against, I call it the Grand Canyon uh, resistance on the left, and that's all the way to this low right here. Uh, it's about uh, the 23rd of August. And then I do this, and I just go click, and I move this to the right, if I can get there without changing the number of bars. And I say, okay, great. So this is green because it was on the way up, and this is pink on the way down. And then I say, Normally, I've, I've already done that. I would have done it over here. I actually had this, but I lost it because I had to close, shut down suddenly, so I lost some of my notations. And then I would go to the lowest trough, and I'd just say, you know, <clears throat> that looks a little steep. Let's go to there, and we'll just extend it out, and we'll do this right here. So this is more by eye, although I have a routine that I talk about for um, subscribers, how I do this and when I do my webinars on this. And this is called the Chapman Wave Inside Track. No, it's not. It's called the Inside Wedge Target Re Support Line. On the way down, it's pink. On the way up, it's green. And I make a dash so you can identify it for what it is. And now if you look at it, this comes in right there. That's perfect. That's exact. And look at the way it held right there. It went under the 200 period moving average, and it held. This says that by... The 28th of, uh, no, of November, this low here, the low of the 30th of August at 102.95 could be 94 could be touched. The way I get to it is lower lows and lower highs is the lowercase h that went to a lowercase m in the Chapman methodology, and then it broke down and it gives you the one to one to the downside. So we're watching this. However, the strength of this 200 period moving average, you've got to respect it. Once the moment you get close to it, boom, it's like a, like a magnet. It just draws the price in. And then to break away from it 
It's just so hard. Okay, so that's the dollar. And in the monthly, in the weekly chart, uh, there's a peak B. And remember what I was saying before is that it looks great on a short term, but when you put it into perspective, this is just really a bounce in the in the dollar, because look at this. You're way up 114.78. You've plunged down to the the 90 98 area, 99, and you hit the 200 period moving average, and you ran up. And yes, you closed above 105.88 for more than two out of three sessions. That should have been very good. But now the weight of other things is just attracting uh, the downward price. So the dollar is digesting these gains, but it's really been in a big digestive phase for a long time. Now let's just, and then the monthly chart did the cup formation. This could turn into a dreaded H because it's at an A. And if it starts to pull back, and at any time, if the dollar on a monthly basis closes under 100, that's serious. But at this point, it's just a really important, it's in the digestive phase within like a long rectangle. Now let's go to the EUR USD. So the euro had in the monthly go backwards. In the monthly chart, went to a peak C, holding quite nicely. The pink nine period moving average is still negative. The MACD is good. The stochastics at eight, at sixty-seven percent. That's just okay. Um, you're in a in a. Oh, I didn't do this for the bell. I'll do this now. Look at this incredible Chapman wave inside track repellent zone. Just two lines. It could have had one line. I put two in line, two lines in because. I, I like to demonstrate it. I, if I saw it as one line, I'd immediately know that there's an inside track repellent zone. But the green says when you start to trade above that, that's really important. When you're inside, you can barely make it, and then you pull back. That's really not good. So the euro is just in a monthly chart says, yeah, it's okay. But it's been making lower lows and lower highs. Nothing's changed there. It's still kind of stuck. All right. But wait a minute. Look at this inside track propellant zone. Pink, green, uh, if I can remember, there it is, green, and it hit it exactly. It's just amazing how this, how do charts know that there are trend lines? Well, I talk about the tide. The only way I can figure it out, I haven't been able to do it mathematically, but as a tide, look, the tide is gently going down, so it keeps making lower lows and lower highs, but lower highs in the sense that it has a certain a proportion to the upside before the tide pulling back says it's uh, it's going up but now it has to pull back and now that was very positive so it went to a, to retest that left side high it didn't and now it's come down really sharply so this is going to be very important why because at this particular point if all the aspects of the other in the domino aspects if all the other or chessboard all the other pieces of the puzzle start to crowd around the queen or whatever it is you're looking at a situation where um, if yields keep coming down, it should help gold. Um, if that's the case, it's euro and gold generally go in the same direction, not the same proportion, but the same direction. So this move over the last week has been really good. But when you put it into perspective of the monthly, let's just say, eh, it's okay. All right, let's go to the weekly. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Let's go to the weekly. There you go. Click. So the weekly says, Chapel Wave, you're always looking for peak D. There's an instant restart. Um, and the instant restart always suggests if it goes after that peak D, pulls back, and then it takes out the left side low of that D, be careful because you've got a Chapman Wave unconventional flat base restart, which says it's like, Bart Simpson's hairstyle, it can keep spiking up, but it keeps coming down deeper and deeper. And at some point, it's going to take out this low. And lo and behold, it did the 1.048 uh, was taken out right there. Or at least it was tested, which is exactly what you'd expect. Now there's a brand new buy signal uh, in price, but in no buy mode. The MACD is just about to turn positive. It hasn't yet. So this is almost like a head and shoulders. But the 200 period moving average, is, it's been tremendous resistance at 1.101 is going to be the big test. In the daily chart, this has been a fabulous move up. I'm calling it a leg F. It actually could be an F slash B because uh, the MACD is still very strong. The stochastic is holding very well at 90%. So that's what you want to see. So the euro, dollar, 
uh, at this particular point has tremendous support in the one point, uh, these numbers drive me nuts, 1.078 is the nine period moving average support and both the 14 period and the 200 period moving average of 1.0739, that's absolutely key support. If that breaks in going into the next three, four weeks, that's gonna be a big problem. I just see it as a breakout here, and that's really important. All the technicals are good. There's no reason why I shouldn't hold support and try for the 1.095 area. And the 1.095 area gets you closer and closer to the 200 period moving average of the weekly chart. Hey, wait a minute. Let's look at the USD JPY, and that usually goes in the direction of the dollar. I'll be back in a moment. The Dow's down only 13, S&P's down uh, a half. I'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Uh, yeah, a couple of things. Yes, I will be looking at TLT, and uh, yes, I will be looking at ENVX, and yes, a long rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. That's my expression. Well, lo and behold, look at this. It just this E-mini for the last, since 9.30 this morning, just been stuck in this narrow, narrow trading range after a spectacular uh, week, and then all of a sudden, <clears throat> big pullback uh, from this morning uh, up in the 45.39 area. <clears throat> excuse me, down to 45.14. And now it's just kind of stuck. All right, here we go. So the USD JPY 
has just gone to a sell signal in the daily chart. Uh, it has just pierced a couple of things. I need to read you some of this chart because uh, I had to shut down last night. I don't know what happened. I, well, I do know what happened. I'm using the oldest version of TradeStation possible because it has all the things that I've loved ever since the beginning that I've used it. The new one does things fabric. People love it. But I'm just, I, I don't want to make a change. It means that I might even have to notate every single one of these thousands of charts. I, I don't want to do that. So I'm just stuck here and it kind of gets, it just poops out of me and then it fails and it closes down without saving everything. And then the day's work I have to redo. So I look at this. So this is the USD JPY. This is a yen. So the yen it goes mostly in the direction of the dollar. They go to kind of together. And when they pull back, they kind of pull back together. This doesn't look anything like the, the dollar, which is much weaker, but it's still pulling back. Here's your support level. Uh, it's just gone under it. The reason why I'm switching, and we haven't yet got a pink nine period moving average is I've gone a little bit ahead to say this particular pattern I've been taken out. This trend line <clears throat> says that it's in a sell signal, not a sell mode. It could um, reverse that, and I'd have to get rid of that uh, down arrow. But it says, take this seriously. But the weekly chart is so spectacular. It went to a peak, e, it went to an F, very quick E, and then an F. And that says, you know, this the pattern says it could digest 140, it said 1. 49, 60, uh, 67 right now. Um, 148.17 is the 14 period moving average. And this major trend line, yeah, it's a little sloppy, but let's call it a major trend line up in the. Now, I don't want to do this today, even though it's technical fright. No, I'll just mention it. Um, technical fright. What I do is that the very low that's made before a major, major turnaround, when you take that as your low and trend line, oh, it's, it's almost impossible. It's not good. I usually go to the next one <clears throat> and use that as my trend line support. So in this particular instance, it takes you to, <clears throat> excuse me, let me just have a drink of tea. Um, and have a look. It's kind of wide. It's got an expanding wedge. It's almost like a channel, but it's a, a it, it, once you don't have parallel lines, you haven't got a channel. So it's an expanding wedge. I'm going to be a little conservative, and I'm going to put this in like that. I don't really need that at all. I've got this. You break under the 14-period moving average, then you're going to say, okay, now wait for the green to go under the... Nothing's there. Everything is really still very bullish in the yen. This is the weekly chart. The daily will change that. If the daily starts to trade at 147, all of a sudden you've got everything in sync. But right now... You've gone to, a, I could call this a G slash C in the uh, monthly chart. I don't like to get too fussy about this. I will call it a G slash C because that's the technique that I use. Um, but I, my thinking is it's still probably a C. But I've got to put that in as a, as a, uh, just in case. You've got the lopsided cup formation like a V. So that's all very positive. The stochastics at 85 in the weekly, 87 in, in the uh and sorry, 85 in the monthly, 87 in the weekly, and 65. So this is becoming vulnerable. But it's daily chart. The monthly chart is still fantastic. But what I am looking at is that they go together, and if that dollar doesn't find some support, maybe even uses the 200-period um, the exponential moving average after four sessions, usually four is not... Uh, it, it can go a little longer. But if it uses that as a prop to... to uh, uh, trampoline to move up into the 104, 105 area, that stalls us, move to the downside. And that's really a possibility that you've got to consider. So if you look at the USD CAD, which is the Canadian dollar, and they often they the dollar, US dollar, and the yen and the Canadian dollar go kind of in the same direction. You can see it's got a dreaded H. It saved it by holding the 50 period exponential moving average. Technically, I have to wait for today because it's a red a, a candle, but I would put a down arrow at this particular point to say, well, you're going to prove yourself it's in a sell signal, not yet a sell mode. Monthly chart is only in a peak D, but it's not doing very badly. So when I put it together, I say the weight of evidence for me says that the dollar is weak <clears throat> in the shorter term, but the intermediate term is still good. <clears throat> the yen still very good. 
the USD, Canadian dollar, still very good. And look, it broke, but now it's back into that long-term downtrend line. I, I treat them gingerly. These very long-term trend lines, oh, they look fantastic, but actually it doesn't mean anything. Time alone will get you above that. So I, I just treat it with respect. But look at the wedge. And it's broken to the upside. It could even pull back a little bit more. So when I put it all together, and when I put gold together, you remember we were talking about gold, and I said that gold to me had moved because of the anticipation of the Mideast and, and the geopolitical situation where gold becomes the prime focus uh, as a safety factor. But you have to put it to, that you have to put together with the XLF. If the financials were really deteriorating, well, then I'd say, ho, 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 gold, I want to grab every single thing I could. But at this particular point, I think it's more reflex action. And because gold is held so well, you're starting to see some movement, and you'd expect that in the gold stocks, because if gold is priced much higher, why on earth would the gold stocks not want to move? But I don't like the fact that the GDX, GDX is kind of languishing. <clears throat> Let me just show you this. The GDX, ah, I mean, look, it's just kind of stuck. It's not telling me anything yet. Um, it's a nice move, but it's not great. So that's the gold miners. So you see how I'm trying to put the whole picture together. And that says to me, don't think that it's all over for the dollar. The dollar is pulling back. It deserved a very meaningful pullback. How it handles 103 to 102 support over the next week is going to be really important because if in sync you get the yen pulling back and the US USD CAD, the Canadian dollar pulling back, then it becomes more serious. But at that point, I do expect that you would see gold and the, even the rotation between gold and silver says there's something wrong with this picture. So it's not geopolitical. It is trying to form a 200-period moving average in gold at 1.961 uh, support. <clears throat> That's really key. And you've got Shenway falling axe formation here. Start to see the gold continuous contract start to trade above 2000, maybe 2006. All of a sudden, that's going to be important. And I, I suspect... Then you will start to see the GDX, the gold miners, move up into the above the 2940s, 200 period moving average, try to get to 30.31. Uh, and it needs to do that by, I would say, three weeks. No, I'd say two weeks, even with the holidays. All right. I think I've covered a lot that people were asking me about what I'm looking at. Uh, just real quick, uh, I can't get the TLP. That is long. After such a smash outside this is a very nice turnaround the price is not good you want to sponsor up tonight the TLP in the 94 not the 89 at this particular point I want to see the evidence I want to see yields just splat come right down I'll be back that was down 34 the gold report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I suppose you remember we spoke about this, a long rectangle formation can last a lot longer than patience. Every time you think it's just about to break support, it bounces. Then it goes like a little ping pong point in a plastic sideways tube. Then it bounces to the top. You think it's going to break out and the upside. Oops, it just turns around and comes back down again. So it's stuck. When <coughs> or if the E mini ES, um, ESZ closes under 4514, no, 45.13, <clears throat> probably a change of trend. If it closes above 45.25, to that 45.26, 200 period exponential moving average, that's a breakout. So we're going to be watching this closely. All right, meantime, back at the ranch, uh, what do we got? We've got another segment, got two segments left. So <coughs> TLT right now, very nice move up. Nice is not good enough. And look, the report this morning came out and some of the stats were a little bit, a little bit more inflationary than one would expect. So I don't think it's going to be easy at all for the Fed. Um, and within that context, um, the proof of the pudding is is in the price. If you look at the TBT, we got that fabulous pullback from a peak D in the weekly, a peak F in the Chubb Wave methodology, right at 44.52, and that was on October the 23rd. I should. I think I had that typed in. I'll do it again. Forty-four point ninety-six. Forty-four six ten twenty-three two three. Okay, and that has tremendous support in the thirty-sixes. If it goes to the thirty-fives, that weekly chart starts to see that nine-period moving average finally pulling back sharply. It's almost like the dollar with a nine-period moving average, except this did break out. Remember, we were looking at this. And we were saying, wait a minute, the um, TBT has almost the T and X. Look, here's a 10 year. Keep your eye on the middle chart. That's way better looking. Look at that. That's the 10 year yield. Uh, the T and X is the 10 year T Treasury note. And here it is at 44.56, 4.456. It went underneath the uh, 14 period moving average. It's just a tad under it right now, but the nine is still over it. And it did a beautiful one-to-one -one in the Chapman falling axe formation. I've taken some of it out because it was getting messy. And you've got a PD cell mode in the daily chart. So this is almost like a cell signal, yeah, in the uh, uh, weekly, but not yet a cell mode. And at 49.97, Trey, oops, I put the wrong arrow in. I put an up arrow instead of a down. It's one of those days, I can tell. Um, there it is. Okay. There. Um, and yeah, this is pulling back in this whole area of 40, uh, the 43s is going to be support that you have to watch. If it suddenly pops to the 45, 46 area next week, oh, that's going to be a bit of a problem. Um, and it's a possibility that it could do that. But the trend in the daily is down. The trend in the weekly is 
very short term, becoming negative, but it hasn't gone anything yet. Very negative. The Magnes crossed negative. Stochastic's now at 69%. Nine is still way over the 14-period four, uh, moving average. So it's a process. And that's what I think. That's why I think this is all going to take time. We had that spectacular takeoff. And now we're about, um, uh, Snowball says, what time is the F1 race in Vegas? Right, all right. Um, you know, we've had that. This is more a digestive phase, a very important when you're going up like this. And um, But I still say that next week we should see a rally. Um, I mean, I, actually, I said I would do this. I'm going to do that right now. So let me do this NVNX, ENVX. This is Enovix Corporation. We had this, did very nicely. And then the other day we got back into it again, took a little bit of a loss. And I, I'm stepping aside. And one of the reasons is that these stocks, these this this is a battery development, 3D cell architecture. There are a lot of these stocks that, to me, are saying, for instance, another one that we have with nice profits, haven't got into it for a while, is STEM energy solutions, storage, EV cell. So something's not right in this area. And I'm getting uh, notices here on automobiles. That they're talking about uh, price uh, cuts, price cuts. I, I've, I haven't seen that for a long time. So something's not quite right. Actually, let's go to that guy. AN is the symbol. What was his? I don't remember his name. Uh, Automation Inc. Yeah, look at that. Peak D in the daily, peak F in the monthly, and a very sharp pullback in the daily. Can't go above the 200 period moving average. It's at 134. It was once in the 180s. Uh, that was earlier in July. I something's not quite right. So, yes, yeah, so let's just say very meaningful uh, rally. Now, I, I needed to do this before we wrap up. Now, there was another question. I did the TLT. Yeah, I did that. I did E. Oh, so ENV, ENVX, what, what are the parameters that you look for? You see this wick. If at any point in the next, it has to be within the next two days. Uh, it could be more, but I'm just saying this particular technique with the inverted Chapman Wave Roman candle says that it, any day that it's able to hold for 90 minutes above $12.17, I'm doing this by eye, but I think it's close to that, says there's a real good chance it's going to make a leg D by going above the high of 12.15 uh, so, yeah, that was made on the 15th of the month. If it takes out yesterday's low of 10.91, uh, it just says it's stuck in a range. It doesn't have to break down, but it's just stuck. All right? So I hope that helps you. Uh, another uh, Costco, yeah. So this is very important. Walmart, it's amazing. Just look at this. Walmart went to a peak. Oh, I didn't have a chance to update this. Yeah, it went to a peak G three days ago, right here. Made a new all-time high at about 169, 117. Let me see. Did it make it, uh, it go exactly to 100, 170 round number high? I don't think so. You just missed it by a couple of pennies, or we went over it. Uh, 169.84. Uh, 94. 169.9. Come on, you could have given me a round number. Anyway, and look at plunge from 169 down to uh, the 200 period moving average this morning, so that was 155. That was a peak D. Um, and this is exactly the same thing. This is the Chapman Wave unconventional flat base restart right here. And you would expect that at some point it's going to test the 150, uh, 154s, 152 to 154 level. Okay? But it is a leg D in the monthly chart. So you've got to be careful here because this was one of the best. So Costco was also doing extremely well uh, in the reg big rectangle. Along this is the wide. This is uh, not the narrow rectangle. I've given webinars on this. If you're, if you're subscribed to my opening call, you get these webinars for free. Check it out. I have a webinar that I discussed the narrow rectangle, long, narrow rectangle. We've got this exactly right here. Look at this. It is still in the range. You thought it was going to break down? doesn't do that. It says it's getting I, – I, I have a count, and the count says that within about another uh, – I'd say by 11.10, between 11.10 and 11.20 – uh, today, we'll watch to see whether it's finally building up enough. See, the technicals are improving, but the price is not. That says that if it pulls back again, these technicals have a long way to go down. But in the meantime, it's holding very steady. This is the narrow rectangle. But let's go back to the large rectangle, and that's 
right here with Costco. And the rule of thumb is if it makes higher highs and higher lows from the flagpole high, it can go just under, right on, or just above the previous high, and you've got to be careful. So, so far, it is in the leg D in the weekly, keep D in the daily, leg D in the weekly. I'll be back. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Uh, yeah, so with, with the Costco's uh, 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 chart, look at this. Yes, target A, B, C, D, and then it spikes up sharply. And this is a stock that was up in the 180s at one point and goes down to almost 100. So you're going to see this rotation. The rotation says that this is a very important moment because I would like to see, and I'm going to, I'm going to be saying this a lot over the weekend when I do my um, weekend overview tomorrow for subscribers to my opening call, usually about an hour-long overview of what we're looking at, what, what we've done, what we intend to do. Uh, but this IWM, <clears throat> I'm going to have to look at it closely because if we get a pullback here in the major indices just for a brief moment, you want to see the IWM start to move. You don't want to see that pull back again. It, it has to start very, by, by the end of November, it must be in the 185 or higher area. If it's able to do that, that's really positive. All right, with that said, hand you over to Steve Rhodes. Should be a wonderful show. Check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. Is that right? Yep, we're almost done. Yes, we're almost done. But I just wanted to show, look, look how much patience you need for these things. It is still right now, it's trying to break to the upside in this one minute chart. So it's been in this range since nine. Uh, you can talk, talk about the low of 942 this morning, which was at 
uh, 95.14, and the high was this high that was made right here at 1022 peak F at 45.23. That's a very narrow range considering where it's been. So we'll see. And I, as I said, I think the the five minute chart is starting to try to build strength to attempt at least a move to the 200 period moving average. That's the daily one of 45.25. If we can start to trade after. Um, 12.15 this afternoon, after about, about yeah, 12.15 Eastern time. If we can start to trade above 45.26, 45.27, that'll be a good sign. Uh, meantime, it's still stuck in that range. So all I can say is have a wonderful weekend. Uh, we'll see you back here on Monday. Uh, just real quick, yes, uranium stocks are still doing well.